Number 10. Murder for Hire Dahlia DiPolito is a woman from Florida, an ex-escort who couldn't wait to get her grubby hands on her husband's money. She wanted her husband's cash so severely that she hired a hitman to take him out, only to be caught by the cops. In her third trial, Professor Craig Williams told the jury that Dahlia wanted to kill Michael DiPolito to take his car, his townhouse, and all the money he had in the bank. Dahlia's defense attorney said the police department entrapped her. This should have been a pretty open and shut case, but it wasn't. The issue was that Dahlia rose to fame in 2009 when the police arrested her, and the whole thing was shown on the TV program Cops. They showed a video that was taken while Dahlia talked to an undercover cop about taking out her husband. Her defense used this as a flimsy defense, and it worked, at least for a while. A conviction for solicitation of first-degree murder, which should have had a 20-year sentence attached to it, was thrown out in 2011, and then a retrial ended with a hung jury after that. This means the jury couldn't decide on a verdict, even though the evidence showed she was overwhelmingly guilty. So, it wasn't until 2017, after a decade of being filtered through the justice system, that she was finally convicted and sentenced to 16 years in prison. Number 9. Too Many Bribes Ed and Linda Mangano have been sentenced to spend the foreseeable future in prison. Ed, who was once a powerhouse in the Long Island political scene, was found guilty in 2019 of committing bribery, fraud, and conspiracy to obstruct justice. His wife will serve 15 months in jail for her role in the corruption, while Ed gets 12 years. Both husband and wife will begin their prison terms in June 2022. Now let's look at what these political elites got busted doing. It's a little complicated, so I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Ed was involved with a New York restaurant magnate named Harendra Singh. Starting in 2015, Singh was placed under investigation because the government was sure he had been bribing officials. The bribes were to guarantee himself loans in the tens of millions for his businesses. And then, if he defaulted on those loans for whatever reason, it would be the taxpayers who ended up paying the money back. So basically, these rich guys can take out loans, spend the money themselves, default on the loan, and ordinary people have to pay it back. They get away with this by bribing people in power. Singh gifted the Manganos vacations, expensive watches, vibrating chairs, and other fancy trinkets. Linda was given a position as a food taster for $100,000 per year. Her role was considered no-show, meaning she didn't have to show up. Now, thankfully, these greedy politicians are paying for what they did. Ed will be locked up for more than a decade, while his wife serves just over a year. Number 8. The Bad Father A father from California has been given 212 years in prison. He's convicted of murdering his sons and trying to kill their mother, and it was all to satiate his greed for money. The 45-year-old identified as Ali el Mizayan intentionally drove off a pier at the Port of Los Angeles, with his wife buckled into the passenger seat and his two autistic sons sitting in the back. Rewind to three years earlier, in July 2012, right after he got out of Chapter 11 bankruptcy, Ali purchased accidental death policies for himself and his three close family members. He bought the policies from eight different insurers, making the lives of his wife and kids worth about $3 million. Even though he was only making about $30,000 a year, he paid $6,000 in premiums annually to have these insurance policies. Clearly, he was plotting something. On April 9, 2015, he drove his family into the water. His two sons, both of whom were severely autistic, sadly drowned. The only reason his wife survived was that a nearby fisherman helped her out of the water. Ali didn't get caught at first. Instead, he collected $260,000, purchased real estate abroad, bought a boat, and then tried to sue the Port of Los Angeles for his family's wrongful death. But his greed did eventually catch up to him. He thought he was clever by waiting three years so that the insurance companies didn't contest his claims. But this was a fraudulent scheme. U.S. District Judge John F. Walter called it an evil and sinister scheme and passed the maximum sentence allowed by law. Number 7. The Mary Farmer Murders Mary Farmer is one of the most sinister criminals of the 20th century in America. She was an Irish immigrant who lived in Jefferson County, New York. This was a predominantly Irish community. She lived there with her husband James, leasing a house at the turn of the century. In the fall of 1907, James lost his job at the paper mill, and Mary gave birth to their first son, Peter. Like most Irish immigrants, Mary wanted a better life for her children, but she had no money, no prospects, and her husband had no job. 
but her neighbor and landlord, Sarah Brennan, had a lot of nice things. Sarah's house was better. She had more money, and her husband had a job. Mary wanted to take Sarah's place, and so she did. In October 1907, she pretended to be Sarah Brennan. She went down to the clerk's office and said that she wanted to transfer possession of the Brennan home and the residence she was living in into her name. The clerk notarized the paperwork. Mary forged Sarah's signature, and suddenly, Mary was a homeowner. The very last time Sarah Brennan was seen alive was April 23, 1908. When her husband arrived home, she was simply gone. That was when James and Mary informed him that his house actually belonged to them, and then tried to convince him that Sarah had run away. The husband didn't believe Mary Farmer's lies for a second. He got the sheriff. They went to investigate Mary's house, and they found the body of Sarah Brennan stuffed into a trunk. On March 29, 1909, Mary Farmer died in the electric chair at Auburn State Prison, killed by greed. Number 6. Murder on the High Seas Nathan Carmen is facing life in prison for supposedly killing his mom. The Vermont man, according to prosecutors, killed his mother out at sea, intending to inherit $7 million. Nathan is 28 years old. He appeared in federal court in 2022 for the murder of Linda Carmen. Nathan was discovered in an inflatable raft adrift off the coast of Rhode Island. This was right after taking his mom on a fishing trip, and their boat suspiciously sank. Federal prosecutors say Nathan sabotaged the boat, left his mother there to die, and then took his chances in the inflatable raft. He was discovered eight days after the ship sank, and Linda's body was still missing. He denies he did anything to the vessel, but something funny is happening. Prosecutors say Nathan murdered his grandfather, John, back in 2013. This murder was also motivated by greed. He was hoping to get money and property from his grandfather's estate once he was dead, and he did. He allegedly shot his grandfather with a rifle while he slept and received $550,000. Nathan was never busted because the murder weapon vanished, and he could never be directly linked to the crime. Now, prosecutors are trying to take him down for both killings, his mom and his grandpa. Number 5. Walking Around Money A very greedy man was arrested in 2014 for trying to smuggle $580,000 in US currency into China. He was detained by the police at a checkpoint in Shenzhen City when entering from Hong Kong. He had nearly $600,000 strapped to his legs in $100 bills. Now that's some serious walking around money. When you enter most countries, the maximum foreign currency any person is allowed is $10,000. This is to stop people from smuggling money in and out of nations. When asked why he would risk smuggling so much money, the man said that he wanted to use it to buy a house. When the cops asked why he didn't just use a bank transfer, he said he didn't want to incur any fees. It was the only way he could keep every cent of the cash. This greedy skirting of the rules got him into trouble. He'll never see the money again. He could have paid a fee, but instead, he lost it all. Number 4. The Rat Scammer In another bizarre case of greed out of China, a man in 2019 was arrested for dropping a dead rat in his food. According to a local news source, the man was trying to earn himself a free meal and some extra cash. He entered the restaurant with his wife, sat down to eat, and 20 minutes later claimed that there was a dead rat in his meal. In reality, it was he who put the rat there. The restaurant offered the man free food, but he refused. They then offered to pay him 20,000 yuan, about $3,000, but he denied that too. Instead, he demanded 5 million yuan roughly $736,000, at which point the establishment's proprietor contacted the police. When the cops got there, they learned he had brought the rat himself to extort cash from the restaurant. Number 3. Scamming the Elderly In 2021, two men were arrested in Lakewood, New Jersey for scamming an old man out of almost $10,000. They got caught because, just like the rat scammer in China, they got greedy. According to the Lakewood police, a 78-year-old man received a call from someone saying his grandson had been arrested in Buffalo. The scammer on the phone said that his grandson had been in a crash, there was an injured female involved, and he needed $9,800 to make bail. The elderly gentleman, truly and honestly worried for his grandson's safety, paid the money. Then, as he was eagerly waiting to hear from his grandson, he received a second call. The scammers thought they'd hit the jackpot with a rich and unsuspecting older man, 
And so, when they called a second time, they asked him for $50,000 in cash. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. The old man realized he was being scammed and called the police. The cops agreed to throw together an undercover operation to nab the suspects. During the fake delivery of the second payment, three scammers, young guys just 19 years old, were arrested. The police charged them with theft by deception. And in case you were curious, they were from Florida. Number 2. The Hungry Fake Agent A very greedy and starving woman was busted in November 2020, pretending to be an FBI agent. Her name is Kimberly Ragsdale, and she was trying to get free food at a Chick-fil-A. And according to local news in Georgia, this wasn't the first time she'd attempted such a bizarre scam. To be fair, it's hard to say if Kimberly is crazy or greedy or just really hungry. When she walked into the restaurant, she demanded free food. She threatened the employees, saying that she would arrest them if they didn't give her food right now. They knew there was something wrong, and so they called the police. When the officers arrived, Kimberly was still there trying to get free food. She even told the cops she was a federal agent, but had no identification on her presently. She spoke into a supposed radio she had been hiding in her shirt, and then she was dragged away in cuffs. The woman wasn't an FBI agent, but just a hungry citizen who didn't want to pay for food. And it wasn't like Kimberly didn't have the money. After her arrest, she paid the $3,000 bond and was let out. Number 1. Grandma's Killers In Thailand, greed is just as powerful a force as it is everywhere else. A 62-year-old woman was just murdered by her young granddaughter in the Muang district of Bangkok in early 2022. According to the police commissioner, the granddaughter and her boyfriend killed Somshri Mamkratok and then disposed of her body in the river. The motive was money. The murderer, who hasn't been named because of her young age, was brought up from a baby by a grandmother. This makes it even more shocking that she could have planned and gone through with such a despicable crime. The granddaughter took it when she learned Somshri had come into some money, 100,000 baht, or just under $3,000. The money had been a personal loan that Sonshri hoped to use to sort out the family's finances. Instead, she ended up dead in the river, and her granddaughter was nowhere to be seen. But clearly, the granddaughter hasn't watched enough TV. The police tracked her down using her mobile phone and made the arrest. Once the granddaughter was in custody, she admitted to recruiting her boyfriend to help strangle her grandma with a rope. She had promised her boyfriend 30% of the cash. Now they're both being charged with murder. Would you rather be scammed by one of your family members or have a significant other try to swindle you out of your money? Let me know in the comments and thank you a lot for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe and come back soon for more awesome videos. See you then. Bye.